Welcome to the second part. Uh, so last time we looked at the air side of things and this time we'll be looking at the next part which would be the uh, timing. So the other thing that air affects um, is something called your vacuum advance on your distributor which is on the top of the side of the distributor. Um, I don't think you can see that there can you? So here is the vacuum advance and here is the pipe that comes from on top of the uh, carburetor there. It's here. Uh, so this just uh, has an airline that picks up off the carburetor, the HS4. And um, basically you have a vacuum when you're on low throttle or zero throttle. And what that does is it then sucks on the end of this and that causes this um, bar here to be pushed in and then in turn that changes the timing and is only operating um, as I say on low throttle so it's not it's not a full throttle issue um, but it is uh, to help on um, you know on tick over so this one the diaphragm inside I think is gone so inside this bell there's a like a rubber diaphragm when you suck and on here it pulls the diaphragm up which is attached to this arm um, so if you suck on there nothing happens so here's a new one this one's a mini spares one and um, if I suck on the end of this hopefully you'll see that arm move um, so obviously this one's working and we're going to try and just fit this on the car uh, basically that little uh, hole there in the silver arm just goes on a pin on the plate inside the distributor and then uh, there's two screws to that hole and oh, that, this hole here. So we'll, um, we'll see if we can fit that back on without taking the distributor out. So I was able to get it out uh, with the distributor in place here. Um, but I don't know whether I'll be able to put it in and wiggle it in um, or if I'll need to take the plate off and take the distributor out possibly. I don't really want to interfere with that because I'm pretty happy with where the timing is at the minute. Let's have a go. Here we go then, we've got the vacuum pipe attached up here and uh, this is the other end. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, suck on it and show you the vac advance. So you can see the timing is being adjusted by the vacuum there. That is only in um, consideration when you're on low throttle, so uh, it's not going to really affect your top end power, but you'd still want it for uh, fuel efficiency. Because when you're cruising at 50, the vacuum advance will be advancing the timing. Um, there is another type of advance in the uh, distributor here, which is mechanical advance, and that is weights inside getting um, centripetal force, makes the weights go to pull uh, to the outside, and that makes the um, makes it advance the timing, makes the plate turn, and makes it advance the timing. Um, Basic timing without the vacuum advance attached on here at idle ish, let's say 1200 revs. Um, you can read the uh, the timing marks down here with a strobe light, something like this. Uh, this is a Gunson's one, um, it's just a very, very basic one. So, back advance off 1100 ish, 1200. Uh, you want to be seeing, um, let's say, between 9 and 12 degrees uh, advance. Um, for best performance, you want as much advance as you can get away with it without causing engine knock. Um, so more towards that 12, uh, as long as you're not, as I said, causing engine knock. Right, so once you've got that set, keeping your vacuum advance off, Using the idle adjuster screw here, you can, uh, with a flathead screwdriver, 
it's just there on the car. You have to take the filter off, obviously. Um, where is it? In this picture, it's this screw. It's this screw here, which goes in that hole there. And you basically, you just turn that screw, turn it up through the rev range, and watch the timing advance. That's the mechanical advance from the weights in the distributor. That should get right away up. Um, when you get this up to like three and a half, four thousand revs, you should see maybe 30, 35, you know, degrees of advance. You need to make sure that that is advancing. If, if it's staying at 12 or 10, then that means that the weights are seized inside your uh, distributor. So that is talking a little bit about roughly getting the timing right. Right, just show this strobe connected up. So there you go, we've got 12 volts coming off there, ground here, and then we've got the sensor on the number one. So what you need to do to get your basic timing is come in, disconnect your vacuum advance by pulling him off here and then with your strobe come in here, look down the gap and you can just about see behind that fan belt some teeth and we can get focused on those. The longest tooth there is zero and then each tooth going down towards the bottom of the car is an additional four degrees there are some cars that don't have this if you don't have that set up it's possible if you've got an inspection plate here you can open this inspection plate up on the end of the clutch housing and there are marks inside here as well where you can work out the timing Again, this is covered in the Haynes manual if you've got one of those. So now we can set our basic 10 to 12 degrees uh, timing. So you might be wondering how to actually adjust the timing. So I'll just show you really quickly down here. Uh, oh, sorry, down there on the distributor. Um, really simple differs very slightly on different distributors but I'll talk about that when I show you. Okay so here you can see the distributor and you can see the back advance there coming off to the side. Now if you've just put it in and you've no idea where the timing needs to be roughly with the back advance pointing up here at this sort of 45 degree angle um, that should hopefully enable you to get the engine started and then you can have a quick check on where you are on the timing down there. And the way it's secured is with that single bolt, that single bolt there, which holds a fork shaped clamp on this distributor um, that goes, you can just see it, you can just see the uh, edge of it there. And it goes on either side of this groove on the distributor and clamps it to the engine and prevents it from turning. Now all you need to do with that loose, put your hand on the end of the distributor and um, make sure you're not just holding the cap and just turn it very slightly clockwise or anti-clockwise to um, adjust the timing, advance and retard. Obviously you want to make sure the back advance is off. Now what you will notice is two white dots down there that I was using to line up my timing before we um, fixed the vacuum advance. So what was happening is basically because this diaphragm in here was broken, the little arm was pulling the uh, timing all the time, um, you know, pulling the plate round slightly. So that meant that um, when I put the new one on, the timing was completely out. Um, we gave it a quick check and that's the amount of rotation I had to uh, move this back to uh, to get the timing correctly at, at the idle okay so that's how you actually adjust it different distributors have a slightly different clamping mechanism on the on the uh, on the distributor
distributor down there face um, again it's just a case of loosening it so you can actually rotate the distributor okay that's the end of the second part and the next part will be uh, looking a bit more at the electronics side of things